FTD, frontal temporal dementia, what it does, how we get it, and what your chances of getting FTD may be. Frontal temporal dementia is a neurodegenerative condition that primarily affects individual social behavior, their personality, it can cause aphasia, and Parkinsonism. Let's talk about this more. It is one of the most common causes of early onset dementia and typically presents when individuals are in their 50s and 60s, with the mean age being 58. It presents with individuals having these prominent behavioral changes and these are things like having inappropriate social behavior. That inappropriate social behavior often happens because people with frontal temporal dementia, those are the regions of the brain that are affected, end up having disinhibition in their social interactions. This disinhibition can come across as inappropriate touching or kissing of strangers or people that no one is familiar with. It can be displayed as public urination, an individual deciding to just go over to the side of a building that they're in and urinating. Things like intrusive behaviors, like offensive flatulence, or offensive remarks that are made completely out of context and inappropriately. You've got to remember, your frontal lobe helps you understand when the timing for things is appropriate. It's like when you go to sit down on a date or when you're with your family talking. When do I wait and then interject in a conversation? Do I wait for the food to come out to the table before I start eating for someone else to have their food brought out? How do I interact? When do I interact? In frontal temporal dementia, as the frontal lobe shrinks or experiences cerebral atrophy, as those neurons die, as the neurons in our temporal lobes start to die and wither away, our ability to interact at appropriate times and in appropriate places becomes severely impaired. This is the social problems and the disinhibition that is faced when someone has frontal temporal dementia. The other thing people can have is apathy or a loss of empathy, being able to express sympathy or emotions to other people, and that's because their right frontal orbital degeneration occurs. Those parts of their brain, the regions that are responsible for the natural sympathies and empathy that we have as humans and compassion on others, those neurons are dying. Those neurons are withering away in this type of dementia. You see the early anatomists and neurologists named this condition correctly. Frontal temporal dementia. It's the part of the brains that shrink or lose their neurons. Once you watch our Brain Basics, where we break down the different lobes of the brain, you will be able to understand why individuals that have a shrinking or a loss of neurons in their frontal temporal regions end up displaying these disinhibitions and these behavioral problems. Another key one to think about that people have or that people express when they have frontal temporal dementia is hyperorality. Hyperorality is people who eat food, but they don't chew it all the way. It's this constant wanting something in their mouth, the presence of something in their mouth. They may have lip smacking behaviors, or you may see that they're constantly binge eating. It's not eating something or a lot of something every once in a while. They're constantly putting things in their mouth. They want to have that oral stimulation. And then they have very compulsive behaviors. These can be compulsive behaviors in regards to their speech, their language, they can express lots of hoarding behaviors, they may be constantly cleaning, or they may be expressing checking behaviors. They're constantly going back to the door to check something, going back to the door to check the locks. These are all findings that we see in regards to the behavioral changes in people that have frontal temporal dementia. Now, the other thing that we see quite a bit is that patients, they lack insight into this condition in themselves. They're not recognizing that they're disinhibited. They're not recognizing that they're violating social norms and expressing inappropriate behaviors. And because of the lack of empathy and their apathy towards things, 
They also don't understand the effect that this has on their friends or their neighbors or their families. In fact, they seem completely oblivious to it. That can make living with or helping someone with frontal temporal dementia incredibly frustrating. These areas of the brain that are affected in frontal temporal dementia show shrinking or loss of neurons, particularly on MRI scans. In fact, when we get an MRI scan of the brain in individuals that have frontal temporal dementia, we see that there's focal frontal and temporal atrophy or brain shrinkage in these regions. In fact, 50 to 65% of all the patients that we do MRI scans on that have frontal temporal dementia show us these changes. There's actually specific targets, regions in the brain that have more atrophy. Those are things like the anterior insula, the cingulate cortex, places that connect other regions of the brain that help it function smoothly, and the amygdala, things that help with mood, motivation, or anger. These places all have a loss of neurons in frontal temporal dementia. And one of the things that's the most concerning, probably for people who are family members or friends or loved ones of those that have frontal temporal dementia, is how heritable this is. Meaning you can inherit genes that put you at a significantly increased risk of developing frontal temporal dementia yourself. In 10 to 15% of the cases, frontal temporal dementia is inherited at an autosomal dominant pattern. And we're not gonna get into Mendelian genetics and how we formulate and figure out those patterns in this video. But suffice it to say that 50% of individuals that have frontal temporal dementia have at least one other relative that has dementia. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you have someone in your family with frontal temporal dementia, you need to get in and see a neurologist. You should be plugged into your healthcare system so that you can have this be monitored and you or even get genetic testing to understand if you have a predisposition or an increased risk of developing this yourself. That may help you with planning your future. The saddest part, and the thing that is perhaps the worst part of any diagnosis of dementia, and particularly frontal temporal dementia, is that we have no cure for this. What we can do is we can do things like behavioral modifications. We encourage our patients to exercise, to increase their blood flow to their brain to maintain an active cardiovascular system to give their brain the best chance and reserve it can have. We send a lot of people to speech therapy as their language function diminishes, as they become aphasic, as we mentioned earlier, meaning that they're having a difficult time putting words together in the right order that they need to to get them out. That's an expressive aphasia or a receptive aphasia. When you're talking to them, they just have a real hard time understanding what you're saying to them. And so speech therapy oftentimes can be helpful. And then as doctors, caring, compassionate doctors, we try everything we can. And there has been some benefit with some SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, medications like trazodone or antipsychotic medications that can help calm the behavioral abnormalities in people with frontal temporal dementia. And because we have no cure, and because this is a chronic and progressive neurodegenerative change, we get asked all the time, well, what is the prognosis? What does this mean going forward? When someone is diagnosed with frontal temporal dementia, the younger they're diagnosed with it, the worse the outcome is, and the more rapidly it will progress. And at best, people have eight to 10 years left of life. And that can be even shorter if the individual presents with increased behavioral abnormalities. And it can be even worse than that. Because as we mentioned earlier, people can have Parkinsonisms associated with their frontal temporal dementia. And that's things where patients become more rigid. They get more stiff. Maybe they have some tremor that's associated with their cognitive changes. And if they have that or motor neuron disease, then that means at best, you're looking at two years of life left. Frontal temporal dementia is one of the most debilitating and life robbing, personality changing dementias that there is. And this affects everyone involved with those that have been given this diagnosis.